All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up we have your Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. Let's get into this one. As far as your Cowboys on the match predictor, 55.3% versus your Giants coming in at 44.3%. Let's get into the odds as well as the spread. Uh, odds, we've got Dallas favored at 3.5. 46.5 5 is your over and under. Next, let's go ahead and get into the depth charts. As for the Dallas Cowboys, you have Dak Prescott, starting quarterback, followed by Cooper Rush and Trey Lance coming over after that blockbuster deal. Uh, running back Tony Pollard, followed by Rico Dowdle, Deuce Vaughn, and Ronald Jones, who's suspended. As far as your wide receivers, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Tolbert, David Durden, who's on IR for the third. Brandon Cooks coming over. We'll get into him later. Uh, Kevontae Turpin on the second, followed up by Michael Gallup, and then Jalen Brooks on the second as well. As far as your tight ends, Jake Ferguson, Luke Schoonmaker, Peyton Hendershot, and John Stevens Jr., who's on IR, followed up by your fullback, Hunter Lukey. Left tackle is going to be Tyron Smith. Second is going to be Chuma Edoga. Left guard is going to be Tyler Smith, followed by Asim Richards. Your center is Tyler Betis. Right guard, Zach Martin. TJ Bass, and then Josh Ball, who's on IR for the third string. And then right tackle is going to be Terrence Still, followed by Matt Walesko, who's on IR as well for the second string. Get into your defense. Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Hankins, Osa Eduzua, Micah Parsons, Leighton Vander Esch, Damon Clark, Devin Harper, Stefan Gilmore, Jerron Kurse, Devonovan Wilson, and Trayvon Diggs. Special team, Brandon Aubrey, Brian Anger, Kevontae Turpin, and Trent Sieg. All right. So this is the make or break situation for Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, and to be honest, the Dallas Cowboys in general, right? I'm not going to say, hey, Trey Lance is coming in and he's going to be the future of the team. I really think that Jerry Jones seen this as a way to create – Shake up to make da Prescott realize that hey, you need to step the hell up and get out here and ball, or your job is on the line, as well as Mike McCarthy. So, yes, this year is going to be the make or break. This season is going to be the make or break. All right, so as far as that goes, I do expect him to have a more conservative approach to his play. I would be surprised if I see him throw many deep passes that have the potential to be picked off. Now, the reason why I say that is. If you looked at the preseason camp and everything like that, and I know it's kind of difficult to utilize as a sample, but he didn't look too good in the deep pass, and he got picked off multiple times by Trayvon, and it looked sad. So I definitely see him going with the more shorter pass approach, taking his time if he can back there, and uh, I don't see him using the deep ball as much. Now, that's not to say that it's not going to be there at all, but – I feel like he's going to have a more conservative approach to protect himself from being picked off. We'll see how that plays into it. Um, obviously, Tony Pollard, I think he's going to have another breakout year. Last season, he had 193 carries on 1,007 yards. He averaged 5.2 a carry. Uh, CeeDee Lamb following up on his last season as well. He had 1,359 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 107 receptions. This year, you guys got Brandon Cooks coming over, and I feel like people have been sleeping on Brandon Cooks. They're acting like he hasn't balled out on every team that he's been on, from the Saints to the Patriots, the Rams, the Texans. I mean, the man can ball. He's going to get his yards. He's great on the 50-50. He's great on the deep ball. He runs great routes. So I would be excited to have Brandon Cooks on my squad if I was a Dallas fan right now because I think he adds to that Gallup, adds to that CeeDee Lamb, uh, a combination and basically gives Dak Prescott another option as far as someone to throw to. Um, Michael Gallup's going to be coming off, obviously, a slow season, which I don't really expect it to change as far as his production goes, but he should be targeted on average about 10 yards per catch. Dalton Schultz is unfortunately gone, so I don't think we're going to see the same kind of production at tight end that Dallas is used to, but Jake Ferguson did show some promise last year and in the preseason, so I'm excited to see what he does in the mix. And as far as your defense, you got your usual suspects. Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Hankins, Micah Parsons, Leighton Vander Esch, Stephon Gilmore, who to me is always going to be a Bills player, uh, Jerron Kurse, and then Trayvon Diggs. 
So, yeah, I mean, I expect the Dallas defense to always do what they do. They've been strong. They have the solid core defense that they need. And at the end of the day, I don't really see much uh, coming in between them and, and their goal and their objective is to be great, which is what they've been doing. Whether or not the Cowboys' offense gets everything on board is what basically plays the major part in them winning this game. And I'll tell you this, them winning week one is going to be very important in the locker room for not only for morale for the fans and the team in general, but for Dak Prescott. He needs this win probably more than anybody else on that field. So now let's go ahead and get into these Giants. Uh, Daniel Jones, he's on his fifth year, just signed his new contract. We're coming off his best year where he had 317 completions on 472 attempts, 3,205 yards, 15 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. But he did take 44 sacks, which hurt his QBR, uh, where he ended at 62.9. Um, Saquon Barkley, after talks, fighting over his contract, he ended up bending the knee in response to the running back pay struggles and all that kind of situ- stuff. You know what happened there. You know what happened. Um, but I do expect him to be great as long as you know he stays healthy, which is one of the biggest problems that he's had, right? He wanted all that money. He didn't get it. So guess what? If he goes out there and he gets injured again, it's going to be an aha moment for the GM and the staff and everybody when it comes to his contract. Uh, but obviously we're hoping that he doesn't get injured and he stays healthy. I want to see him go out there and win and uh, take care of business for the Giants. As far as your wide receiver front, you got Hodgins, Slayton, and Campbell, who are all great route runners as long as Daniel can accurately get them the ball. Sterling Shepard's going to be taking the backseat as a vet, longtime Giant, but I'm sure he'll see some reps at some point. Uh, Darren Waller's coming over at tight end from the Raiders, so it's going to be interesting to see what he's able to do as they put him in the schemes for the short downs and things like that. Defense-wise, I expect to see great things from the Giants. You know, you got Dexter Lawrence, who had his best year last year, 35 tackles, 7 sacks, 2 forced fumbles. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, who will have to work through the Dallas O-line, but last year he showed promise with his 33 tackles, 4 sacks, 2 forced fumbles, and 2 fumble returns. As well as Michael McFadden, Aziz Ajulari, your safeties to cover the deep ball, Jason Pinnock and Xavier McKinney. So at the same time, the Giants have a decent defense. Is it better than the Dallas defense? Hell no, without a doubt. But it's just enough to cause some issues as far as with the deep ball and in the middle for Dak Prescott. So that's also going to be something that he has to work through. It's not going to be easy, but Dak Prescott should be able to work through these things, being the veteran quarterback that he is and that we expect him to be. Uh, So wrapping things up, Dallas and especially Dak Prescott has the most to lose starting off in week one. So I see a strong game plan for them to come out smart and conservative using the run and short passes to get Dak and company going. The Dallas defense is a household name, and I think will be enough to stop Saquon on the run and disrupt Jones' ability to scramble will leave him trying to figure out his passing lanes where he will have trouble. Uh, I'm going to go Dallas in a tough one, but I'm going to go Dallas by a field goal. So I'm taking Dallas by three, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Make sure you guys smash that like, that thumbs up, and, of course, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.